All right, what is up? Today we have what I'm going to call for the time being Runeterra Riot. And that is not... All right, no, it's kind of a play on words, uh, especially with what's going on right now. I'm not going to lie. Um, that is not to say that I do not support the movement going on. I fully support it. Um, Riot is also obviously the name of the creator of Legends of Runeterra, Riot Games. So we just decided to dub the name of this segment Runeterra Riot. Don't know how often I'm going to do this yet. Maybe we'll do it. Um, monthly, maybe we'll do it bi-weekly, weekly, I don't know, let me know what you guys want in the comments below. The goal of this is going to be to give you guys an update on the state of Legends of Runeterra as it currently stands, whether it be tournaments, the metagame, oh, the whole shebang, okay? So, as always, my name is Justin, also known as Shit Just Works, and today, if you are looking for just what's going on in the Runeterra universe as far as Legends of Runeterra is concerned, not the whole Runeterra universe... Uh, then you're in the right spot. So stick around. We're going to go through all that in just a second. All right. So first and foremost, I want to just quick shout out to the current tournaments uh, that are running on a pretty consistent basis right now. Uh, there's three and then one on Reddit. So obviously, if you join the Legends of Runeterra Reddit, definitely check it out. They do hold some tournaments uh, now and then. Link will be below in the description. And there's three Discord server-based tournaments, that uh, two of which I generally cast every other weekend. Uh, one being Duels of Runeterra. If you're looking for some of that tournament footage, look anywhere on my channel. You can find a ton of the matches, especially from the uh, most recent Duels of Runeterra 10. There's also Jam Fest, which is usually held on the week that Duels of Runeterra is not being hosted. Um, and then there's also the Maverick Tournament League hosted by G'day Maverick, which you can actually see his name here on the leaderboards, which we'll go over in just a second. So if you want access to, links will be below in the description. And real quick, again, this is kind of what I want this uh, this segment or this video to be about on a regular basis to sum up those two tournaments. There was a Duels of Runeterra two weeks ago. Again, that's all the footage that you can see over the last week or so that I've released on the channel. The winner of that was Fresh Lobster beating Blazing Asian. And we had Maverick Tournament League last weekend in the EU. Uh, which is also won by Fresh Lobster, actually beating Alan ZQ, uh, who also helps with, as you can see in a second here, uh, this Mobilytics website as far as uh, just giving input on the metagame and etc. So uh, just a quick update on the tournament scene. This is obviously the uh, Mobilytics ranks right now. Uh, you can see G'day Maverick is actually number one in EU. He is the one that hosts the Maverick Tournament League. Uh, we can see ne Nephili Bada, don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, number one for Americas, Lore Prod JPN2 for Asia, and Katarina for Southeast Asia. Uh, Pakravac21 is also second in Asia, and if you guys remember, he was the first to hit Masters when the game uh, initially released the ranking system, right? Uh, you can see some other people on here too. Nick makes plays. He does stream as well as, uh, he, I think he casted one of the tournaments one time. He plays in a lot of the tournaments. Rattling Bones, I've had the pleasure of casting in a few tournaments tournaments myself um yeah and that's it so that's just that's kind of a quick summary of what's going on right now in the tournament scene for legends of runeterra so what we're going to dive into now is a little bit of the meta game as a whole the deck lists and the top played cards right now all right but before we get into that Real quick, as always, if you are new to the channel, do not forget to hit that subscribe button. Obviously, turn on the bell. You'll know when I release a new video. And if you like this video, um, honestly, please like this video. Hit the like button if you do like it. And I want some feedback in the comments from everybody. Please, 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 right? I, I need, I want to know what you guys want to hear about Legends of Runeterra on a regular basis and how often. Um, I want to know what you guys want to hear. Is it more, you want it more patch related? Do you want it more tournament related? Do you want it metagame related? What specifically in the meta? Give me some feedback below in the comments. I will be happy to try to add whatever content it is that you guys want into these videos. All right, so you can see here we have the uh, the Mobilytics rankings right now for the meta tier list. Uh, now I don't I don't know how recent these are. For the most part, they they are holding true right now. Uh, we do have Tempo Sejuani. Number one right now, uh, this deck is amazing on ladder, especially if you are on the lower parts of the ladder, so definitely check this out. We'll go into more detail, by the way, on all these decks in just a second. 
Um, then we have Endure Spiders. I believe this is supposed to be S. Um, and it's also not Endure Spiders anymore. And again, we'll get into that in one second as far as the deck list is concerned. Um, Heimer Control is still a powerhouse. Awesome, awesome deck. Definitely a little bit harder to pilot, um, which you'll see in some of the win percentages, which we'll go over in a second. And Deep Monsters. Uh, very, very much still a go-to deck right now. And definitely exciting I, you know, I was kind of hating on this deck when it first came into popularity. I attributed it, you know, similarly to Bannerman. Just everybody playing the deck everywhere. Um, it's calmed down a little bit. It's not like everybody and their grandmother's playing this deck anymore. So I do very much like it because it's a new deck archetype from a new region, from a new set that is doing well. And that, to me, shows good card design. I've seen far too many card games where there's a new deck archetype that's released. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! <coughs> that is basically terrible and useless. <laughs> so um, beyond that, we have some other stuff that's come out. Kinku Elusives is now back into the fold. And this deck uh, was definitely in hibernation for a little bit. This deck was the number one deck in the game when it first released. Uh, in beta, it was extremely good. Basically, just play a bunch of small elusive units. Uh, rush down your opponent before they can kill you. Prevent your elusive units from getting killed. I don't uh, I Sorry, I do agree that this is an A-tier deck and not an S-tier deck. I think a lot of people have it as an S-tier deck now, um, but I will get into that in a second. Burn Aggro, as always, is on this list. I do agree that it's an A-tier desk. This, uh, deck, deck, not desk. This is playing Teemo now. Uh, this is playing Teemo now and it's doing well, and I, I'm pretty sure nobody needs me to, to really go over this deck whatsoever. I'm sure you've seen it a million times by now. Scouts. Um, I don't believe Scouts is A tier anymore. I do believe it's a B tier now. Um, and we're going to go over the whole Demacia thing right now too, right? This is basically Mono Demacia. It just has Misfortune Splash. But Mono Demacia is also, I think, now a B tier deck. Um, and I'm very excited to, to be saying that. And that's. I think that it's been S tier for so freaking long. It deserves to be moved down the ladder a little bit. Um, it's seeing a lot less play and it's seeing a lot lower of win rate as well. So very excited to see that happen. We see Shen in the mix now because he got a buff to three attack recently. So that is very good to see him in here. Demacia still doing decent across a few different deck types. Uh, we have Lux Heimer, also a very good control deck. Um, not the greatest. I want to say this is more of a B tier deck now. Crimson Elusives, also a very, very fun deck. Uh, it's basically the same thing as Kinko Elusives. The difference being that some of the uh, the Freljord stuff is taken out for this Crimson package and a couple cool things you can actually do with this deck, uh, which again, we'll go over in a second. And I'm not going to go over all of these on this B tier list. I will mention though, Corinna Control is probably like C tier now. Um, very much not that great of a deck. Very excited that it's not that great of a deck too because I don't really feel that this is an archetype that Vi should be in. It's just like this This deck just combines a lot of like cards that I don't think deserve to be in a control deck. Like to me, having Elise and Vi be in, being in a deck that's inherently controlled just doesn't really make sense from a game design perspective. Obviously it makes sense with the effects of what they do, but... Um, I just, I, I'm very happy that this is finally a C tier deck. And uh, this, I don't agree with either. I think this is an A tier deck, Sejuani and Swain. I mean, I'm probably biased to it. I love this deck. Uh, I think it's awesome, awesome. I think it's uh, very flexible too. You can play very aggro, uh, or I shouldn't say aggro, I should say very tempo-y in the beginning of the game. And uh, you can also play very controlly towards the end of the game if you have a leveled up Swain or Sejuani with Leviathan on the field. Always feels good, right? So in just a second, we're going to dive into some of the win rates and the numbers uh, behind a lot of these decks, how well they're doing uh, using the Mobilytics website. So I do really quick just want to go through uh, patch 1.3 before we get into these uh, these numbers, these statistics. Um, and by go over, I just mean mention really what matters. Uh, patch 1.3, as many of the other in-between patches to the bigger patch updates like 1.2 was, uh, just had a lot of bug fixes for the most part. But they did make a core uh, concept change, I guess, or effect change in the game, and it applies to randomization. Um, I'm a little scared, guys. For those of you Hearthstone players, you, you know why I'm a little scared. But don't fret. It's not that bad. Uh, basically, anything that 
has to do with a random card um, appearing from a region is now from any region. It used to be just from the regions that you were representing in your deck. If you played uh, like Jailbreak as an example, somebody random one cost follower, uh, this will now summon it from any region, not just, you know, uh, whatever regions you happen to be playing in that deck. So I do actually like that change um, as far as all the other cards that are affected by it as well. I think it's good overall for the game. All right, so the numbers the one and the only so there's a lot of different ways to sort these numbers and utilize these mobilytics lists um i obviously i don't know i think as these videos progress i'm gonna get a lot more into these numbers uh, in the future so again please comment below with what you guys want what kind of feedback you guys want um it's gonna be very helpful as far as making these next videos all right and, and before i just want to go over two things real quick which are super good for the game and that is that 11 decks on this list so i'm actually i'm in the deck section this is the region uh which is a little bit more uh just wide of a sample size right as far as what type of decks we're looking at these are specific decks with specific champions um and you know lineups of cards and it is insane to think that right now there are 11 decks with more than 2,000 matches played technically this Vimerdinger deck um it looks like there's just two different versions being played. So you could say there's only 10 decks, um, but it's nuts how many different decks there are. You have Burn Aggro uh, with champion lists. So there's even a deck represented that doesn't have champions. You have Sejuani Vlad, which is doing really well. You have Deep. Uh, you, sorry, you actually have three Vimer decks. Uh, then you have Garen Fiora, which is Mono Demacia. Uh, you have Lux Karma. So, and these are all decks that some of them aren't even really played as much anymore. We're going to go over this in a second. Demacia has seen far less play. So even though this specific deck is seeing a lot of play, because it's just straight up mono Demacia, overall Demacia's play rate has gone down and as has their win percentage, right? Um, and you can see another version of mono Demacia right here. So overall, I think that this, just looking at this list on the surface, it's great to see how many different deck types uh, or how many different decks are actually being played. If you sort by win rate too, it's insane to see how many decks actually have above a 55% win rate. I mean, generally speaking, if you have above a 55% win rate with a deck, that's a damn good deck. Um, you know, I know it doesn't seem like it's too high. It's only 5% over 50, but trust me when I tell you that's very good. Decks that have 60% win rates typically don't stay at 60% for long, or if they do, it's probably going to be some sort of card change or nerf. Uh, you can see here Sejuani and Ash, which is doing incredible right now, is above 60. However, there's only 750 matches played. And I do want to mention too, this is on all ranks, um, not just master or below master. It is master and everything else included. So 750 is a little bit smaller of a sample size, but it's still good because you do see some other decks on here that are, you know, 500, 750 again, 480. So 750 honestly is enough of a sample size to say, okay, this deck is pretty damn good. Uh, it's doing really well right now and on ladder as well as competitive play. I've casted many a game uh, with, you know, playing this deck and Trifarian Glory Seeker and Trifarian Assessor with all the other five attack followers is just such a such a huge combo. Um, things like Reckoning are also a surprise when you're on ladder too because this deck is just now kind of coming in into its prime. Reckoning really wasn't played prior to this. And honestly, it's like a better Ruination, right? And uh, Ruination in and of itself is decent, but doesn't see all too much play um, with it costing nine mana. And it's also slow. This is slow, but it only costs six mana, so it doesn't feel as bad if it gets denied or negated somehow. But generally speaking, you will be able to get this off as long as you play it on, uh, while having two five attack followers or champions on the field, right? So overall, this deck is just doing incredible right now. Definitely recommend this if you're trying to ladder. Um, it is mid-range, so it very much tries to ramp up towards the middle of the game. Uh, really give a little bit too much tempo for your opponent to handle and then eventually having a level leveled up Sejuani with you know something like a leveled up Ash on the field where nobody can block that's a problem all right so now let's go through a little bit more of this list uh, we do have Vimer right here it looks like it by far has the most matches that is no surprise this is very much an S tier deck also has a high high win rate at 54 and a half percent that's really good uh, for having that many matches so this i think is going to remain a good deck this is one of the reasons why in my top five champions video i put heimer i think i put him as number one to be honest with you 
Uh, it was a little while ago and I made that, but yeah, I'm pretty sure I put him as number one. And this is exactly why. The amount of card advantage and tempo you get just from getting his effect even a couple times with like a flash of brilliance is absolutely nuts. Uh, then you have Deep, right? So Deep is obviously, again, like I mentioned earlier, a very highly played deck. Very similar uh, win rate to Vimer as well. And uh, I do think this is also an S tier deck. I wasn't convinced for the longest time, but since this has changed to include... Um, they almost always have two or three jettison with three drug dredgers. Honestly, they usually have three jettison. It goes deep much faster um, than some other versions of the previous versions of the deck, maybe, you know, four weeks ago or so that really just didn't have me convinced that deep was going to be a good, uh, good strategy. But adding the atrocity also helped. It's kind of an alternate win condition if your opponent, I don't know, gets you down. A lot of aggro decks, a lot of times will have you on the last turn on turn seven or eight which is right when you're getting a nautilus down and at least now you have that one out to draw where you can just atrocity the the nautilus and most likely kill your opponent um doing that 13 damage so another awesome deck i will say the vimer and the deep right so you see down here if you scroll down a little bit more if we sort by win rate you can see things like sejuani vlad down here you can see the vimer uh where's deep deep is right here at 31st you can see the win percentages are a lot lower um, but that's mainly because they've had so many games played if you look towards the top here all the decks that have a higher win rate um, they typically have a lot less games played you see the most here is about 1500 um, and that's that's endure which is incredible right now which we'll go over in a second that's very much an s tier deck um and then you have elusives which have just again been ramping up lately uh to be incredibly good so um you it, this is typical whenever you're going through uh you know an, an entire meta game and when you have new decks that even just as an example the ash sejuani you know, things like Reckoning are going to surprise your opponent when they're not typically being played in the meta. So that's something that is usually going to be an advantage for that deck until the meta shifts. Once the meta shifts away um, from how why ever this deck is being successful, it will eventually kind of drop a little bit. So it's probably, I expect that to drop over the next couple of weeks. Uh, it's just a matter of how much. Now, let's go over, I want to go over they who endure and zed so they who endure let's start with they who endure so they who endure is no longer endure spiders uh they who endure is now tempo uh very much tempo and you can play this a few different ways not everybody plays raza in here um but the idea with this deck now and actually there's another uh card i forget the name of the card it's a two cost spell it summons the three ephemerals they all die at the end of the turn they're all one one um, a lot of people are playing that card to basically insta level Callista on like turn three, which is freaking awesome. Um, a level Callista early on is going to get you some serious value, especially if you have a Wraith Caller on turn four. Or honestly, even a, any of these one or two drops are good because they're going to get you more value, right? Each one of these has a Death Rattle, or Jesus, Death Rattle, my Hearthstone days, has a Last Breath effect that will uh, net you some other card from utilizing Callista's effect. Um, Blighted Caretaker is really the only bad one, um, but it is overshadowed by Wraith Caller once you get a Wraith Caller on the field. So Neverglade Collector is another amazing way for this deck to kind of close out. Um, obviously, you have some atrocity in here with the They Who Endure, the very typical combo that we've always had with this deck. But this is why this deck has gotten better. This deck pretty much always relied on the atrocity They Who Endure combo. Now, it very much can just win with just being tempo-oriented, right? They, this Callista allows you to pressure your opponent so much more early on in the game um, than it used to, right? Before, you were just kind of stalling out until the end of the game. A bunch of your units died. You get a big day who endure, and you either attack with Overwhelm or you Atrocity, and you win the game. Uh, Brute Awakening is also not really always in this deck anymore. It used to be Endure Spiders. You obviously have the Elise. Um, and then you'd throw in the Brute Awakening. Okay, it makes sense. But honestly, this is cut a lot of the time now because there's just better cards. Uh, like I said, there's that two-drop spell that insta-levels Callista. A lot of times you want to play more uh, tempo-oriented builds. And most of the time you're seeing the Cursed Keeper package in here with things like Ravenous Butcher to really... Uh, be more on the side of aggro than tempo early on in the game. Um, I've even seen Fury of the North added in here. Fury of the North is huge as well. If you can get, you know, maybe you're forced into an early They Who Endure on turn six or seven, and it's like a six, six or seven, seven. Now Fury of the North might actually push it to that point where even though it wasn't big when you played it, 
now you can still hit for that uh, that damage to win the game. So uh, lots of different ways to play this now, but overall, because it's so flexible like that, I do think this is going to be a deck that's around for quite some time, um, especially since it's already been around for quite some time, just not really as an S-tier deck. Now it's an S-tier deck. Now if we go back to Kinku Elusives, all right, so this deck was down and out for a while. Nobody played this. Now... 100% back in the meta. It's super, super aggressive. Uh, it's kind of weird in that it's aggressive, but not aggressive at the same time. Uh, <laughs> it just kind of plays a little bit slow as far as an aggressive deck is concerned. But same old strategy. Keep your smaller elusive units on the field as long as possible. Have them you know, do some chip damage to the opponent. Buff up uh, some of them with Jewel Protector. Swing for one last turn with Windfire Hatchling. Um, use will to return units to your opponent's hand to get more of that uh, that damage through when possible. So overall, awesome deck. I don't think this is S tier. I think a lot of people are putting this as S tier right now, uh, mainly because if you go to the meta stats on the decks, um, like we just saw, this deck is in a ridiculous spot right now. It's 58.6% per, uh, win rate, and it's in 1,200 games. That's really good for that many games played. But what I will say is this, as well as Burn, which we also went over earlier and, again, needs no introduction, um, these are very polarizing decks, right? And what I mean by that is they either win or they lose. Now, all right, I know that's kind of like a blanket statement. <laughs> Deck wins or it loses. It's, you know, it's either one or the other, right? But what I mean by that is there are many of these decks you can play yourself out of a loss, right? Assuming... No person is ever going to play 100% perfect. You can't possibly know what cards are coming next. There are decisions that you can make that will turn the tides of the game either in your favor or your opponent's favor. So at certain points in the game, you might have an 80% chance to win. Then your opponent plays a ruination on five of your guys. Now you have a 20% chance of winning. So um, that shifts a lot during the game. When you're playing burn or elusives, you basically, based on your first hand and your mulligan, that percentage is not going to change nearly as much as it would with other decks. Um, based on your first hand is very, very much how likely you are to win the game. A Zed with, you know, an Omen Hawk and a Green Glade Duo and a Navori Conspirator, right? You can Omen Hawk on one, Navori on two, Zed, um, or maybe you Omen Hawk on the Zed and then draw into the Zed. So now you draw a buffed up Zed. You're way more likely to win the game when you're drawing a buffed up Zed than if you don't, obviously, right? But you need to curve out well in order for this deck to truly win the game. Um, if you draw poorly, like if you draw a couple Jeweled Protectors or a couple Windfair Hatchlings in your first hand, you know, as long as your opponent knows how to play this matchup, you're far more likely to lose the game. Burn Aggro is a huge example of that. If you're playing Burn Aggro and you draw all of your spells early and no followers, you almost insta-lose most of the time. Um, obviously, that's not 100% the case, but... You have a very highly likely chance of losing if you're drawing two Mystic Shot, a Transfusion, and get excited in your first hand. Like, that's terrible, all right? Um, where you need to be drawing followers. Even if you draw, if you draw used Cask Salesman early on and Imperial Demolitionist early on, that's also really bad. You have to draw Grenadiers, um, Crimson Disciples, Broom Crew Rookies, Precious Pets, and Legion Saboteurs, and you need to be curving out early game. Now, the way that these decks are built. They're meant to curve out well early on. They're, the percentage chance of drawing um, the cards that you need to draw early on is high, which is what puts them over a 50% win rate. But again, it's super, super polarizing. There's matchups they just lose outright. There's matchups that they just win outright. But they they have less of a chance to consistently win all matchups, if that makes sense, right? Um, whereas something like a, a Endure deck, you could very much have the chance to outplay your opponent, especially on lower parts of the ladder. Um, burn aggro and stuff like that even on lower parts of the ladder it's a little bit harder to just straight up outplay your opponent um, because there's really not much to outplay you just need to play the deck correctly so um, some other decks to take note of here is uh, tempo sejuani obviously this is seeing a ton of play i don't necessarily agree with black market merchant and the oop, pilfered good strategy uh, when when the meta overall is a little bit slower, I think t people go to this strategy a little bit more just because you want the extra card advantage. Uh, when the meta is a little bit faster, I think putting things like Reckless, um, Jesus, 
Ruthless Raider. I always forget the name of that freaking card. Because I want to say Reckless Trifarian. Ruthless Raider um, ends up making the cut here for instead of Black Market Merchant. So just something to take into consideration when you're building this deck. Again, maybe on lower parts of the ladder, you might want to be playing um, you know, more aggressive than on higher parts of the ladder. Demacia, I do want to mention real quick. If we scroll down here, you see that Demacia isn't really represented until 18th and 19th on the list. And they have low play rates. Um, you don't see any of the decks up here in the top, right? And if we scroll even further down, Mono Demacia is 23rd um, at a you know pretty solid play rate still, 2,700. But you can see it's dropped significantly down on the list. Um, you have a lot of decks like Sejuani Vlad is seeing a lot more play. I do think Sejuani Vlad is really just because of the Vlad buff. And once people get used to seeing Vlad in, in, on the ladder, it's probably going to have its, uh, its win rate reduced a little bit more. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. You see Vimer obviously has a higher win rate than the Demacia deck as well. I think that Demacia going down as low as it has, you see another Mono Demacia down here at 52.9. I think that's really good for the game. I think it was so strong in the game for so long that to not really have any huge direct nerfs to it. I understand Grizzled Ranger was kind of like a direct nerf, but to not have any crazy nerfs that were just like Demacia is too strong it wasn't about Demacia it was about Grizzled Ranger Grizzled Ranger was the problem not Demacia um, and now to have Demacia not that strong is good it shows that other cards that came out increased the power level of other regions we see cards like Vlad being played we see cards like Shen being played which were both buffed they are decent now and we see a lot of other deck archetypes uh, coming to the forefront Another deck that's seeing a shit ton less play that is really good for the game is Karma Ezreal. And that deck has that deck has gotten completely shit on just the entire ladder. Masters below that, it's just not doing well. And if I could find uh, one of the Karma decks here, it's we might not be able to because it's so freaking low. Uh, Karma is not doing well at all. I, you know, you could attribute it to the nerf to Karma increasing her cost, but I don't really think that's it. I think it's the overall meta that's doing it. You can see here, 48.9% win rate with whatever uh, Karma Ezreal version this is. You have another one right below it, which seems to be more popular. That is 48.5%. They're all sub 50%, which is really bad for Karma Ezreal, really good for everything else. My only concern is that it seems like Ezreal isn't really finding his niche now. Um, it's kind of hard to work him into decks. I've seen him in some really weird decks on ladder, uh, but I'm not sure really where he's going to fit as the meta evolves here. So I'm very curious to see what happens uh, with the next patch update. But I do think that's good. Um, and one thing I do want to note is Fizz. I love Fizz. I think his card design is great. I think that uh, he's awful though. Um, you can see, I think this is, if this deck is the one I'm thinking of, yeah, this is kind of like the Fizz OTK deck that everybody's been playing. I like it. It's super fun, uh, but you can see the win rate is really, really bad with it. Um, yeah, this was 39.5%. That's really low. And that's off a of pretty big sample size. That's, that's 2000 games that that was showing there. So, um, so just an idea again of, of what's going on in the meta right now. Last but not least, what I do want to go over is Ephemeral. Um, Ephemeral is seeing more play but it's not really doing too hot. So I'm going to actually go ahead. Basically anything ephemeral right now has to do with Hecarim. Um, you can see it's definitely getting more play. There's a thousand games between the both of them, but the, the more played deck actually has a 48% win rate, which I'm not really sure what the heck this deck is doing. Um, ah, okay. I don't really like this, this idea for the deck anyways. I think the more common version is the uh, Zed Hecarim version. And I personally like the, I like playing Eye of the Dragon with Hecarim, but either way, it's not really doing too great right now. This one's gaining some traction just by nature of probably being aggressive. Zed Hecarim is a very aggressive deck. Uh, but again, I don't think that Ephemeral is really finding its footing just yet. So curious to see if they do some sort of other buff, maybe to Shark Chariot, which a lot of people have been talking about to kind of get this, uh, this archetype back on track. So let's get into the cards real quick um, and what's seeing the most play. So Mystic Shot doesn't surprise me whatsoever. Uh, you can see some of the cards on here that I had in my top cards list as well, like Will of Ionia. Um, all of these cards, what I like about seeing this list, right? All of these cards are balanced for the most part that are being included all the time, right? Mystic Shot is just a perfectly balanced card. It's two mana, 
two damage and it's the most played card i love seeing that single combat i think is an incredibly well designed well balanced card and it's seeing a ton of play um deny is definitely balanced now i will say it's it's seeing more play than i thought it would after the the change to four mana um now will of ionia is something we're going to talk about in a second i have a, a list that we're going to go over real quick it's only a couple cards of uh, cards to watch uh, will of ionia is definitely interesting crimson disciple i think is i don't know i don't think it needs a change but crimson disciple makes it so they have to be really careful with what cards they release because we can see now that noxus and we're going to go over a different card that i do think needs to be changed um noxus is basically being splashed in anything that can call itself aggro to the point where even elusives like kinko elusives is a thing but noxus elusives is a thing basically comboing with crimson disciple a million times and when you're able to return with solitary monk or navori conspirator and an imperial demolitionist to your hand over and over again and keep using it on crimson disciple yeah that's a lot of damage that's four times that's four damage every time you play the freaking card so uh, it's very very good transfusion is seeing a crap ton of play now which is pretty cool i didn't uh really ever expect to to see that happen now overall matches uh same deal looks very similar uh omen hawk obviously highly played as well kind of kind of interesting that get excited is still really played especially with karma as real popularity going down i think that's mainly because of heimer as long as this card costs three it'll be good with heimer right so um withering whale we see up there still thermogenic beam i think is an incredibly balanced card and also incredibly good and you can still see crimson disciple up here um as far as win rate is concerned this i think this is hysterical it's only been 2000 games played but the fact that laurent duelist is actually up there with a high win rate after its buff is like <laughs> i don't think it's good but i don't know anyways um, and then we can see Kinku Wayfinder and use Cast Salesman having huge uh, win rates as well. And that's what I meant as far as the uh, the Kinku Elusives and the Burn Aggro, right? If you draw these cards, you have a higher chance of winning. Use Cask, I would argue though. Use Cask, you actually have to draw maybe like your fourth or fifth turn. You don't want this early hand. I mean, if you draw it and also have a bunch of one and two drops on your first hand, that's not bad. But you want to be curving into this as a draw most of the time. Kinky Wayfinder, same deal. You don't really want it in your first hand, but you want to have it um, hopefully on turn four. If you can play it that early, that would be perfect. Use Cast, you actually don't even really want to play on turn three. You want to play that on like turn four or five on a defensive turn. Uh, to really get the most value out of it since you're not really playing brothers bond or anything anymore so um legion grenadier we'll talk about in a second this card super high win rate i think this card is busted personally you can see it has the most possible matches too and it's being splashed in a lot of other decks besides burn aggro and you can see everything with a high win rate is corresponding what is this one two three uh this is the top seven cards all correspond with or sorry Top six. We're gonna ignore Laurent Duelist and act like he this card isn't even on there. Uh, it's it's only got two thousand matches. The, these six, seven six cards. Jesus, ugh, six cards. Um, all correspond with Kinko Elusives and uh, Burn Aggro. So it just goes to show you that those decks are doing very well right now. But I do think that they are both A tier decks. I think they have a lot of bad matchups. So um yeah so that's pretty much it as far as uh kind of reviewing mobile analytics right now uh so what i did want to mention was a watch list for a few cards so we have fury of the north i think is an incredibly good card if you look on here i'm not really sure where it is on this list which you could argue is a reason why it shouldn't be changed uh watch it's not even like going to be on this list now it's going to be like sub 50 percent now that i've mentioned it it's going to be it's going to be so far down i can already see it let's let's search the card we have fury of the north here all right so it's actually it's 53.4 percent win rate so it's still pretty good win rate um i'm a little bit concerned with this card with it being plus four plus four it's being put in a lot of decks you can see it has an incredible amount of matches uh and a pretty decent win rate as well and it's across multiple decks this card is in a lot of decks right now um it's even be it's been put in kinko elusives it's been put in sejuani decks tempo so um lots of lots of good uses for this card i think that it's just we gotta watch out for this card i don't personally think it'll be changed because it's kind of hard to change a four four for four like it just seems very balanced especially because you're only getting it for one turn um but i don't know we'll, we'll see with that one thing i do think that needs changing is legion grenadier and legion grenadier which we just went over 
Uh, has an incredibly high win rate. Here's my argument for Legion Grenadier. They just they just nerfed Legion Rearguard. Legion Rearguard is a 3-1 that can't block for one. Now, what you're essentially... This cost... Legion Grenadier costs two. What you're essentially getting is for one more mana, you're getting the ability to block and dealing two damage. I think that's a little too much for the extra mana. I mean, even just... Even just a 3-1 for 2 is good. Like, I don't know. I just feel like this card maybe deal 1 damage to the enemy Nexus. I feel like this card is a little bit too good. Um, maybe make it a 2-1 that deals 2. I feel like would be good. The only problem with making it a 2-1 is that it can't block fearsome units suddenly. And it becomes a lot, lot worse, right? So, um, I don't know. I just feel like this card is a little bit too powerful. And if nothing is done to it, it's going to be in pretty much every aggro deck until the end of time. And another is Will of Ionia, which we mentioned earlier. Again, I don't expect that to see change, but it's it's hard, right? Because that, again, just similar to Legion uh, Grenadier, it's just going to remain good forever if they keep it at four mana. It's in aggro decks. It's in control decks. It's in mid-range decks. It's literally in any sort of deck you could want. It is a decently balanced card for what it does, but sometimes it feels a little overpowered at certain points of the game. Uh, but that's kind of the that's kind of the thing with the card though right it's it's kind of a high skill ceiling card if you know when to play it you're going to get a ton of value out of it if you don't you're going to get no value out of it so definitely a card to watch and finally as riot has already mentioned pilfer i hate that effect that card i i actually i actually despise pilfer and anything related to it I, I, the amount of anger and frustration i get when somebody pilfers a card out of my deck it's so tilting like, if anything, I lose the game not because of the effect, but because of the tilt that is applied to my psyche when they play that card. Not cool, man. Not cool. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, please, please, please put in the comments below what your thoughts are, what you'd like to see in the future as far as reviewing, you know, uh, some of these mobilitic statistics, reviewing tournaments and winners and leaderboards and, you know, whatever ideas you got. Um... Uh, sky's the limit i don't know where i'm going yet with this uh this featured segment but i do want to do it on a consistent basis and i do think it would be good to kind of uh give kind of a state of the game every so often so um, as always thank you for watching thank you for the support stay healthy stay positive i hope shit just works for you and peace out